Hello, I'm very happy to share with you the experience of Omixi. Uh, so I'm Lavinia Unita, I'm a medical doctor and CEO of Omixi. I started this, uh, I jumped in this adventure a few months ago and we are working to transforming, to participating, to transforming medicine and bring um, and help people to be healthier. So, why is personalized medicine not yet a clinical reality? We he you heard already yesterday, a little bit today. So, what is it so? There are way too many reasons for this. There are so many barriers which are still here. First of all, our health systems in all, all the countries, they are pretty bad and they are old-fashioned uh, with one-size-fits-all medicine, which means <clears throat> the same treatment for uh, different people who has the, the same disease. Another barrier is, uh, yeah, despite the fact that we, we discover so many things in the medical field in the uh, past years, we, we never did such a big step in, in medicine, this discovery still remains in the uh, research labs. So uh, the, the patients are no, uh, have no benefit or too little benefit of these discoveries. Um, another barrier is the, the fact that the, the prices of this uh, testing from this discovery remain still high. Uh, even they, they were um, progressively decreasing since few years, but they are still uh, too high. Uh, and not lastly, we have also old mentalities in, in different fields that we have to change. Uh, I forgot the regulations, of course. Heavy regulations in, uh, in healthcare, so we, which are needed, of course, but too much regulations also can, uh, can frame innovation. So what we believe at OMICSI is that the transforming medicine has to start with trans by transforming the checkup. And you're gonna see a small video, oops, sorry. We're seeing innovation in the medical field like we've never seen before. But many of these medical advances are not translating into improved health outcomes for patients. That's why we created Omixi. Omixi is a direct-to-consumer medical expertise company offering an on-demand and comprehensive medical checkup, helping our customers to improve their health in an efficient and comfortable way. Log on to omixi.com Fill out a short health questionnaire related to your symptoms and order your Omixi box. First, you set up your in-home visit with a nurse. The nurse performs a blood draw and collects urine, saliva, and stool samples. The nurse will then administer a quick physical examination and measure your vital signs. The nurse also ensures that your health questionnaire is complete, that all documents are signed, and that you are well informed about your next steps with Omixi. The nurse then submits your samples to a medical laboratory for analysis. You receive your results in two to three weeks and schedule a teleconference with one of Omixi's medical doctors. The doctor helps you to understand the results and what you can do to improve your health in terms of lifestyle and diet, as well as treatment. All of your specific needs revealed through your comprehensive checkup go into giving you an actionable health plan for the future. Okay, so if you remember your um, last checkup, if you have ever uh, had one recently, uh, you'll remember that it's stressful, time consuming, and it's pretty painful as a whole uh, process. And um, it's, it's not generally, it's not a comfortable moment. It's not a pleasant moment. So what we want is to make this checkup convenient and painless. Uh, we want, we, we don't have the uh, pretension that it will be a very happy moment, but we want to make it easy and uh, uh, we want uh, uh, to, to, to make for you a moment, a comfortable moment for you. So uh, changing, uh, uh, as I said, transforming medicine and changing checkup, it's about also to changing the mindset to change the focus from disease to prevention. Because today uh, we focus a lot of disease and we forgot, we almost forgot the, the prevention. And uh, what the traditional medicine does, it's 
and somehow waiting people to get sick to treat them. And uh, this is not just possible anymore in 21 centuries. And talking about uh, prevention, uh, it's speaking pre about prevention, thinking about prevention, uh, we will see a little bit later, it it's brings so much to you. Another important aspect is empathy. And it's almost a pleonasm when we're talking about empathy in the medical field because you, you must think, okay, every, every single medical professional should have empathy towards its patient. But we will know that in um, Fadari, uh, the reality is slightly different. So no matter how changing and how important it, it is a, a new technology and how safe it, it is a doctor, Without empathy, we consider that the, the, the care doesn't, the treatment doesn't achieve the, the real level of care, what, uh, what for the medical field it is to treat patients and to bring real care. So prevention has been a trend for a while, and most of the people had a pretty vague idea about prevention. All people, have that know that they have to avoid bad fats and sugar, they have to do sport, they don't have to smoke. After 50, a woman starts to think to, to uh, do uh, mammographies, men start to think about their prostate. But the prevention, it's much more than this. Must to be scientific, must to be personalized, must to be affordable, and must to be at scale. We'll not have time to discuss the detail of, uh, of each of these, but what I would like to, to remain to keep in mind that the prevention has to be personalized because, because preventing is good, but knowing what to prevent is better. Knowing what is important for you, what are your specific needs, it's so important for prevention. Speaking about prevention and how can we do this with help of data. So data is, are so important for, uh, for prevention. And some numbers, you must say, you must know that 80% of, of chronic disease are preventable. And another number, interesting number, in the United States, 75% of cost of, high, uh, of uh, healthcare goes to treat this chronic disease. So we have to change this, and we can do it with help of data and uh, have meaningful data. Data is important also uh, because the prevention doesn't mean only long-term prevention. We can also improve things at short and uh, middle term. So we, we can obtain improvement pretty quickly. It's not something, well, I, I will do a prevention to be better in 20 years, yes, but also in one year, in six months, in five years. So the goal is for all this, for transforming medicine, for uh, transforming checkup, and to, to uh, introducing this new technology, finally, the final goal is to help people to have a, a better health, and actually is to bridge this gap between uh, this medical discovery and their clinical applications. At OMIC-C, we are committed to, to be very up-to-date to this uh, um, new discovery in the medical field because the, uh, they are growing exponentially. We have uh, continuously uh, exciting discovery in this field. So, Every year we want to introduce in our checkup this uh, la latest discovery. So progressively we want to become an API for uh, diagnosis. Uh, we want to become a platform of diagnosis API, so to connect different tools uh, uh, for, uh, for diagnosis and the better health. So, how do, you, do we build a checkup, a comprehensive checkup? You, you, you saw a little bit in the, in the video, but few details concretely. What we test? We will test the DNA, and we want to go towards the whole genome sequencing. It's a very challenging and ambitious uh, idea, but we really believe in, in this. 
Metabolomics. Metabolomics, are, the metabolites are the smallest molecule in the body, so this will allow us to test in thousands of, uh, of these metabolites for early detections of disease. For example, what, what, uh, why is so important? You, if you, I would say you that you, you can know now that you, in five years, if you continue, continue to have exactly lifestyle like today, not worse, exactly like today, in five years you will have a diabetes. Without no symptoms today, without no change in your blood test, in your classical blood test, would you be interested to know? or um, a pregnant woman without no symptoms and no, no evidence on the traditional blood test, we can detect with, for example, such a test, we can detect the risk of, of preeclampsia, and in addition, uh, thanks to this, we can have a, a better survey, a better follow-up. Another test that we want to introduce, it's microbiome. So the gut is so much, so much more than we, we thought before. So we, we keep continuing to discover the importance of our bacteria in chronic diseases like in, uh, in obesity, in diabetes, in allergies, uh, in so, so many diseases. So, so the, its importance is it's huge. Of course, in addition to, to this test, we, we have an extended general panel, so we, we will look to your cholesterol, vitamins, hormones, um, stress oxidative, and so on. A few milestones. So we, we want to launch a beta test, a private beta test in January, and uh, we, uh, we will be operational. Uh, our launching will be in Q2 of 2016 in London. And what I will, uh, would like to keep in mind, so the um, taking home message, it will be if you imagine that the health could be simple, uh, simpler, um, I want to give you some hope and confidence that it is possible. And OMICSI, we will not just only imagine this, we, just, we, uh, we also started to uh, working hard uh, on this, and we are very excited to, to make it real. Thank you very much. Any questions for Lavinia? Come on. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Um, a quick question on the first results uh, you had uh, with your, your, your tool and your API. Are there any concrete results in terms of diagnosis so far? The first results, what do you mean? Uh, have you concrete examples to share with us uh, in terms uh, of uh, blood testing, diabetes testing and so on? We didn't start yet. We, we started the alpha test for our team. So we have the, like I said, the private beta test in starting from January. Okay. And uh, what would be the first uh, test or the first disease that you would like to, uh, it's, to try? It's very, it's very broadly. It could be everything um, we can detect only um, some physiological process like inflammation or disbalance in hormones, vitamins, and so on. So we, we will look to the, the, whole, um, the, the whole metabolic process of the body. Okay, because it looks a very ambitious project, and congratulations yes, for is, that. So is. I was wondering if you were focusing on a certain a disease or... No, pathology. we are not focusing on, on, on specific disease. So it's, uh, it's, for, it's open to uh, healthy people, which has no symptoms or uh, there are no diagnoses with, uh, with any disease, but they want to, to have a personalized prevention. We want to pred predict. Uh, the risk and improve uh, lowering this, this, this risk. For people who has also uh, um, uh, a disease diagnosed, so we can, uh, we can give a second opinion dia diagnosis and we can help to the improvement of the condition or uh, improve, uh, improvement of the treatment thanks to pharmacogenomics because maybe they don't have the right treatment for their disease and so on. Thank you for your presentation. You're welcome. Um, what I understand is that you told the most important are data. So I assume that by collecting all this data with tests on your platform, you're able to analyze 
And so, uh, to be able to define algorithm. So I have the same, nearly the same question as mm -hmm. the person. It's when you're not focusing specifically of what you're looking for, and it's very general, I am wondering how in practice uh, you can, uh, I mean, work in prevention, because it's really a model, and uh, I mean, uh, you, can de you need to define algorithm, and it's a purpose, no, of your platform, or maybe yeah, I did not understand. Little. Yeah, little by little, we will have uh, algorithm deep learning, and so, so on. So we have tools uh, to analyze. Uh, I understand your question. So we, we uh, doesn't mean that we are uh, we are. Um, it depends of the uh, problems of patients because before they do test, they have also a health questionnaire. It was mentioned maybe very quickly. So we have some clues to take uh, to look uh, to have a particular attention to to some things. But uh, what we want is to have the the whole image and to see what are the uh, the fragilities, what are the the protections for the particular patients, and. Um, of course, the, the most important they are the actionable um, uh, pathways for prevention of disease. So we, we will figure out, okay, it is a high risk for diabetes or it is a high risk ju just for uh, metabolism or glucid. It's something, something wrong or can be very obvious. Uh, so uh, we, we don't focus, for example, of, uh, on on cancer or on particular uh, disease. We want to have the whole pictures and we, uh, we will figure out what is the, the best way, what are your fragilities, what are your protective factors, and uh, in, in this way we want to lower your, your risk. And after this you have a personalized health program. I mean, it's not only the checkup, you will also have guidelines and the treatment if needed for, for this. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I think that the system can predict the risk, uh, but uh, between predicting and preventing, there is a gap. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you say you will tell someone you are a high-risk person, so you have to change your behavior. Mm -hmm. Actually, I am an MD, and I'm taking care of diabetes. Uh, when someone has diabetes, mm -hmm. you explain him the risk, yeah. and you explain him that he has to change his behavior, and actually, he doesn't. Uh, so there is really a gap. Uh, I have a second question which is linked to, so I will go to it uh, at the same time. Uh, further, if you want to do good prevention for the society, uh, I think that people who have the highest risk are low, in low income, low education people. Uh, so what is your market? Do you think uh, that everybody with uh, low education and uh, low income can have access to that kind of uh, prevention or prediction? Uh, so that is my question, thank you. Okay, what we want is to, to, to scale very fast. So at the beginning, uh, when, you, you're not, when you talk uh, in terms of access, um, it's only also, it's, there are two levels, the cost of this and also the, um, uh, the changing in the mindset, the education, because people are not used to, to check their health. Uh, they are used to check uh, symptoms of disease when, when things are, are going wrong. So uh, what we hope and what we, uh, we will work on it is to, to bring this to, to be available to, to everyone. Thank you, Lavinia. Thank you.